Hey folks. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the structure of studying for uh, a particular structure of curriculum, right? This is focused around the med school route, right? Because there is a similar structure to the way pre-med coursework leads up to the MCAT uh, as there is to the uh, preclinical and rotation coursework in medical school leading up to the USMLE step one and step two, right? The, 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 the general structure is that you take some classes for years at a time, right? You know, a couple years of coursework where you have individual classes on each one of these subjects. You dive deep into the material for each one of those subjects during this section, right? Either when you're taking your pre-med courses or when in, you're in your preclinical uh, med school curriculum. Diving deep into the subjects. And then along the way, you have some tests, you have some tests. And then later on, you have these larger tests, which essentially uh, try and test you on everything that you learned during these year-long, years-long academic periods, right? And I'm, I, I'm going to talk about a structure that made sense to me and worked for me, all right? Um, so let's get started, right? Um, the, the fundamental part of this is that you don't need to be using the same materials for both of these sections, all right? Studying for the big all-inclusive tests should be different from the way you study from these smaller subject-based tests, you know, like chemistry, biology, and pre-med, and then the, you know, cardiology, whatever, et cetera, in the preclinical coursework. All right, so what, how, how, how do you do this, right? A, something I noticed people doing during medical school was using USMLE step one, step two study guides really early on in their coursework, right? Years away from them taking the steps. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm sure people do similar things in the pre-med coursework, try and start way too early studying for the MCAT. I don't think that's the way to do it. Um, the way I envision this uh, and what made sense to me is that these years long periods of delving deep into each subject should be used to do just that, delve deep into each subject, right? Because the, the, the study guide materials for the long, the, the, the big, long, all-inclusive tests, while well, they have a lot of great material, um, uh, they, there's a lot of uh, reliance on mnemonics and things to access information that you've already learned, right? So what you wanna do is Utilize your studying during these years long periods, dive as deep as you can into each one of these subjects with an eye towards the long term, right? You want to study in a way that retains as much information as possible for the long term so that you can then access it later with the mnemonics and other tricks for these long term tests, right? So first, that's the first lesson is don't use big test and got USMLE study guides when you're in your preclinical or, 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 or pre-med um, courses, all right? Just study for the tests that you're gonna be taking. Use the study materials that your professors give you, use the practice tests, 
I like textbooks. I, I know a lot of people laugh at textbooks. Textbooks have a lot of good information because what you want to be doing during this, this section of your years long studying is you want to be building a strong foundation of general knowledge, all right, that you can then later on use all the, the tricks and mnemonics to access later on, all right? You don't build the foundation using the mnemonics and the tricks and the memory stuff that you use to do the last minute um, uh, MCAT or, or um, USMLE step studying, right? It's a different type of studying. I'm gonna make this as generalizable as possible so that it can apply the most broadly, but you'll notice I'm not saying anything hugely creative or inventive. This is just what I think is a sustainable plan for continuous learning. The key being you're trying to put this stuff in your long-term memory, not your short-term memory. So you can't do all your studying the night before the tests, all right? And I'm talking about the preclinical and you know pre-med coursework tests, all right? What are we gonna do during that time frame? All right. So in general, you're gonna have some classes, you're, and there's gonna be some problem sets, and then you're gonna have a test, all right? So just one basic way to get as much of this stuff into your long-term memory is consistent little bits of studying every day, all right? It's the same thing for athletics. You don't get good at a sport for by training a lot the night before you're gonna compete, right? You get good at a sport by training a little bit every day and it adds up. So what does that look like in the general coursework section? Well. You know, you're going to have some class, number one, uh, you're going to go to it, you're going to take notes, number one, and then at the end of the day, after the class sometime, you review those exact same notes that you took during the class, all right? Same day. You re review the notes you took during the class, or whatever, however you do notes, you review that subject matter from the lecture you had the same day. All right, that's an important first step. This way, you have your initial presentation of the information during like lecture, all right? And then you have your own review at the end of the day. Then, of course, you get to the next day. You have class number two, notes number two, and then at the end of the day, you review not only your notes from that day, but your notes from the day before, all right? So you're building on stuff. So now you've reviewed the stuff from day one and day two. Um, again, you a little bit every day. You review your notes a little bit every day. And then you see where I'm going this, with this. Class number three, you take your lecture notes number three, and then afterwards you review the stuff from days one, two, and three. It can get uh, to be a lot of stuff by the end of the week, and you'll find, you know, maybe you have to be quicker in how you review it, uh, but this is a way to, every day, you review the stuff that you've been taught. Again, so by the time you actually have to take the test, you'll have reviewed this stuff a lot of time. Now, during these classes, typically you'll have some sort of problem sets or assignments that are designed to uh, help you learn the material for the test, all right? And so those will be smattered around and you'll have to do those as well as reviewing your notes. But then by the end of the week or whatever unit of time you want, you will then have questions from your notes. You'll review your notes again, say, what are the concepts that I do still don't get? You'll have questions from your problem sets, okay? which are the things, which are the answers that I just didn't get or didn't understand um, from all of these, this material, and you'll have material to go to office hours, all right? In general, 
Uh, most classes, professors or small groups or something, will have some sort of office hours. If your class offers office hours, you should try to go to every office hours, all right? Because that's typically when you can ask your pointed questions. And if you're continuing, continually reviewing your notes and your problem sets a little bit every day, you'll find that by the time it gets to the end of the week, you won't waste your office hours time on stuff you could have learned on your own, right? By that time you've weeded it out to, oh, these are the things I've been reviewing this and I still don't understand it, right? So every day you go to a lecture, you take your notes, and then you review that stuff that you learned that day, the same day as you learned it, right? That's the point. So you get a run through of everything twice in one day, and by the end of the week, you have your questions from the difficult concepts from all the stuff, and those are what you go to the office hours with. All right, does that make sense so far? Next now, I mentioned that I, I kind of like textbooks, uh, and but textbooks for these preclinical, pre-med courses in particular. You don't use textbooks to study for your you know, MCAT and USMLE step one, because that's a different type of studying, right? But how do you use textbooks for these preclinical courses? Well, we just talked about how you go to class, you take your notes, you review your notes, you do your problem sets, you review your problem sets, you've done this multiple times, and there's always going to be questions from these notes and problem sets that are more difficult, concepts that are more difficult, right, as you've gone over this. And hopefully you've answered some of these in the office hours, right? But the most difficult questions, those are the concepts that you go to the textbook for, all right? because often these uh, professors will be teaching somewhat from a textbook. And if you don't understand something, it means there's some fundamental concept that you've missed, all right? Either the professor made an assumption that you knew something, or that maybe they just didn't go over it well enough. But if, if you really don't understand something, it's because there's some fundamental concept that you've missed. And that means you have to dive a little bit deeper. And that's where textbooks are great, is if you need to dive a little bit deeper, all right? So you look up in the index, right? Um, the topic that you're, you're concerned about, whether it's, you know, like prep cycle or, or whatever, and then you read that chapter or that section of that chapter, right? You don't need to read the whole textbook, right? That'd be great, but that's a lot to ask, but you, actually try and read, these are texts, they're written for this to be read. You try and read the section on whatever you're having trouble with, right? That's how you pointedly use textbooks. They're like encyclopedias, right? No one expects you to read a whole encyclopedia, but they're good for pointed questions, the same type of questions that you go to office hours with, all right? So if you've been reviewing the stuff a little bit every day, and then at the end of the week, you have built up these questions, then you have the pointed things that you can go to these other sources like office hours and textbooks to find those answers. Typically, uh, for these types of courses, the pre-med and the preclinical courses, these are types of classes where you'll get a practice test, all right? And if so, you're gonna wanna make the most use of that practice test. So what, what do you think you should do with the practice test? you should use it as a practice test. What does that mean? You should time yourself, all right? Time yourself the exact time that you're gonna need to take the actual test, all right? Take it under test-like conditions, okay? You know, go to a quiet place, take the test, time yourself, all right? This stuff is fun to do with a study partner if you can find one, uh, time yourself, Take it all as if it was the test, and then at the end, after you've taken it, you review all of your answers. All right, this is not mind-blowing stuff, but I'm just saying it out loud in case it's not clear to anybody. You review all of your answers because sometimes you'll get answers right for the wrong reasons. So even if you got it right, you should review and make sure that you've gotten it right for the correct reasons, all right? 
and sometimes there will be questions on the practice test that you again you really don't understand and then you need to go back to say okay was this in my notes ever was this in one of my problem sets that I missed or overlooked um, that's you have a pointed review so during this review you also can be going back onto your notes from lecture, et cetera, and to your practice problem sets to review that material again, right? So then by the time you get to the real test, you've, re you've reviewed all of your class notes multiple times because you've been doing it, reviewing your notes from that class day the same day, every day, right? And then you've reviewed it again to find what are the concepts you're missing to go to office hours, etc. And then you've tested yourself and you found, okay, under test-like conditions, I either do get this right or I don't get this right. Why am I getting these concepts wrong under test-like conditions? That's something you have to ask yourself, right? Um, but this is how you expose your own weaknesses. You want to expose all of your weaknesses before the actual test, right? And so at this point in time, though, you've done all of this studying. You've reviewed all your notes. You've done all these problem sets and you've done these practice tests. So when it comes time to review stuff for like, you know, the night before the test, you don't have a lot to do. Right? You, you know the things that you have trouble with, you know the things that you don't. Um, but you've already done the studying. Right? You don't need to go into some cram session. You get a good night's sleep the night before your test. Right? And this type of a little bit every day, long-term structured studying is how you retain information in the long term. Right? And if you dive really deeply into each subject along the way, later on when you're studying for MCAT step one, step two, there will be, uh, you know, the, the fossils of this information in your brain that you can then use your mnemonics and your study guide things to, to dig up, to uncover, and to categorize, to, to get back at them, all right? Um, so that is a general structure for how to consistently, a little bit at a time, study for your either pre-med or pre-clinical courses in such a way that you do the best you can on the tests that you have to take, because you gotta get good grades on tests, right? Um, and also, you're doing it in a way that is building the foundation on which you're going to pull later on when you're doing your actual MCAT, USMLE, step studying, etc. Right? You will never have time to go into as much detail or depth on a particular subject than when you are in your preclinical or pre-med courses. Right? And that is where you want to spend your time, is going into detail, depth, studying to really understand things so that you can access it later on, all right? Because during these pre-med or pre-clinical years, which are like, you know, two plus years of work, you're building your foundation of knowledge, right? For years at a time, right? So that when you're studying for these big tests, you know, you, you, you only need, you know, three months, six months, you know, somewhere in that range, uh, on the order of months studying for these big tests. And once you're in the studying for these big tests, that's when you pull out my other video about um, planning out your time to study in a standardized way for standardized tests, right? And for that, see that, I'm not gonna go over the whole like 15 minute thing here. You guys know where the other video is, right? So, but that, that this is a generalized way to try and build up your knowledge in the long term uh, while you're in these pre-medical, pre-clinical courses and whatnot, right? Um, 